So this lesson is an introduction to triangles to kind of bring together what you guys did in your stations. In number one, it says that we're supposed to write the angles and sides in order from least to greatest. So if I were to draw uh, this triangle here, T, U, V, remember I'm not going to draw this to scale, I'm just kind of putting the letters down. It's saying that U, V here is 17, T, V here was 14, and then T, U was equal to 9. So if we're going to put the angles and sides in order from least to greatest, we could start by putting the sides in order because we've definitely got all three sides. So clearly this one's the smallest, so it would go segment TU. Then this would be the next largest number, 14, so segment TV. And then we go to the next largest number here, which would be VU. So that's our sides. To do the angles, remember you want to look at the angle that is opposite of the smallest side because that's going to be the smallest angle. So opposite of this 9 would be angle V. And then we're looking for the 14, so opposite of the 14 would be angle U. And then we're looking at the 17, which would be angle T. So the same would be true if I gave you a triangle here. And let's say that this is E, F, G. And I meant to give you angles before, clearly I didn't. So here uh, we've got F, G would be 10.9. Uh, e, G here would be 17. And then E, F would be 10.9. So Again, the idea is that the angles and the sides kind of correlate to each other. So in this case, if you look, the smallest angles that we have would be opposite of the smallest sides. And these sm sides are the same, so we've really got an isosceles triangle here. So angles G, that's opposite of this one, and angle E, that's opposite of this one. Angle G and angle E are going to be the first one. And then the longest angle, the largest angle, would be the largest side, so then that would be angle F. And then clearly you could put the sides in order from least to greatest. Now, moving on to the next set of questions, it says that we're supposed to determine if the side lengths could be used to make a triangle. Well, what you should know is that you should be able to add two sides together and it, their sum would be greater than the other side. And if it does, for each case, then you know for a fact it's going to make a triangle. So for example, 5 plus 9 is 14. Is 14 greater than 15? No way. So this would not actually make a triangle. Now if we looked at this case here, let's start with like 3 and 4. So 3 plus 4 is 7. Is 7 greater than 6? Check. We could try like 3 and 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. Is that 9 greater than that 4, the side of 4? Yes. And then you could do the last set of sides here, which would be like 4 and 6, which gives you 10, and we want to know if it's larger than that last remaining side. And 10 is greater than that. So it works in all three cases. Therefore, we know that this would make a triangle. Moving into classifying triangles by angles and side. Uh, you need to look at your names. But if you looked at this one here, it tells me that these two sides are congruent. And so if they're congruent, I know I'm dealing with an isosceles triangle because the definition of isosceles triangle is that at least two of its sides are congruent. Also, look at the angles. If you look at the angles here, we've got three acute angles. So this is an isosceles triangle, and it's an acute triangle. So it could be an acute isosceles triangle. Looking at this one here, they, if you notice, this would be like an obtuse angle. So we've got an obtuse angle. We could take a protractor to it and measure it. And then we also see that all three sides are different lengths. When they're different lengths, we would call that scaling. So this would be like an obtuse scaling triangle. On the next set of problems, uh, we're dealing with the exterior. We're supposed to find the measure of angle X. X is supposed to be right here. So the idea is that the two remote interior angles, the ones that are farthest from this exterior angle, not touching, the two remote interior angles have a sum that would equal the exterior angle here. So really what you want to do is just do 58 degrees plus 52 degrees, and you would get that that exterior angle is 110 degrees, because these two added together equal that exterior angle. So the same thing here. So we've got uh, x here was equals 110, so this one we've got 6x. So what does that mean? Well, we've got two remote interior angles, so 38 plus 82 would equal that exterior angle, 6x. So the first thing you'd want to do is you'd want to add those numbers together. So we'd have 120 is equal to 6x. If we divided both sides by 
6, then we would get that x is equal to 20. So we solve for x, but we're all supposed to just find the measure of this exterior angle. Well, we already found that 38 plus 82 was 120 degrees, but you could double check that because if x is 20, 6 times 20 is 120 degrees. So that exterior angle would be 120 degrees. Lastly, we have this set of problems here where it says find the measure of each triangle or an each angle in the triangle. Uh, this one's kind of a trick question, but notice here, let's just work with this triangle here. We have learned that the three angles within a triangle should add up to be 180 degrees. So you really want to take 180 minus 65 and minus 60, and the remaining amount would make this 55 degrees. Now, if this angle here is 50, and we've got this angle here, this angle plus this angle plus this angle, make a straight line. So we could actually figure out what this one is because these three angles should add up to, to be 180. So again, you want to take 180, subtract 55, subtract 50, and what you're left with is that this angle is 75 degrees. Well, now I've got two angles inside this triangle. We know that they should all add up to be 180. So one last time, you're going to do 180 minus 35 minus 75, and all of that adds up to be 70 degrees. So now you have all your angles inside this triangle. In this particular one, we know we've got a 90 degree angle here, but we've got two algebraic expressions. So just remember that all three angles, so that angle plus this angle plus this angle should add up all to equal 180 degrees. So we want to go ahead and add our numbers together. 37 plus 67 plus 90 would give us 194 equals 180, and then x plus x would have been 2x. So what we're going to do is subtract 194 from both sides. So 180 minus 194 is ne negative 14. So 2x equals negative 14. Don't fret that it's negative. Divide both sides by 2, and x is equal to negative 7. Well, don't worry about the fact that x equals negative 7, because look, if we plug it back in, it still leaves my angles positive. So for this angle right here, the x plus 37, if x is negative 7, negative 7 plus 37 makes that angle measure 30 degrees. If we put the negative 7 in this one, right here, x plus 67, that is negative 7 plus 67, which gives it 60 degrees. And we already know that that last angle measure is 90 degrees.